Hey there, Breakfast Clovers. I'm Crayley, half of Phoenix Sisters Cosplay, and we are part of Back of the Cereal Box Network. This is Back Issue Breakfast Club, and this week we are reviewing Ravager Fresh Hell by Sean McKeever, David Hine, Yildere Sinar, I'm sorry if I pronounced your name wrong, and George's Jaunty. All right, good morning, everyone. Ravager Fresh Hell is a standalone novel, mostly standalone anyway, featuring Rose Wilson, one of my absolute favorites. If you see me recording Terror Titans and we've got Ravager up there right behind me, one of my favorite pieces of art of all time. Rose Wilson is my girl. And Fresh Hell is all about her trying to find her place in the world. Ratings wise, this book is probably for like older teens and up. Uh, it does touch on topics of human trafficking and drug abuse. And it gets it gets in there unapologetically. Nothing graphic happens, but you might not want younger kids or younger teenagers coming with you to those questions just with those questions just yet, right? Reading placement wise, it does help to know a little bit of something about Slade Wilson, aka Deathstroke and Ravager beforehand. If you've seen a Teen Titans cartoon, if you've read any Teen Titans stuff that has Slade in it, or if you've seen the live action DC show Titans, you'll be able to keep up though. There's background information in here. Like, pick it up if you know anything about Ravager at all. Like, any smidge. Story-wise, the first issue in here is actually from Slade Wilson's perspective. Deathstroke seems to be dying, which with his superhuman healing skills seemed like it shouldn't have been possible before. Is it really happening? Is it not? I won't spoil it for you, but as his dying wish, um, Rose Wilson goes to visit him and she has some drastic plans that don't go quite as she expected them to about her final confrontation with her father. The rest of the novel is from Ravager's perspective and after that confrontation with her father, she realizes I'm giving him too much of my attention, too much of my emotional energy. I need to figure out who I am and what I want to do. So she does a bit of wandering. She goes uh, back to visit the Titans. There's a question of whether or not they would let her back into the Titans or not. Um, how they decide and everything. I don't want to spoil that for you either. But at least in this book, she does not rejoin them yet or ever. You'll, you'll have to read to see. So in her wanders, uh, it becomes more and more clear that the epinephrine she's been taking to enhance her precog abilities, her like see a little bit into the future, move a little faster, fight a little harder skills is addictive. And she is um, not handling things well. She's having blackouts and somehow she ends up in a really small town in Alaska where she passes out, a doctor fixes her up and says, hey, this epinephrine is killing you. If it weren't for your superhuman healing skills, you probably wouldn't be here anymore. Her plan is just to wait some things out and keep on moving, but something is not right in this town, okay? It's just, mm -mm. she's got a bad feeling and her bad feeling was right when somebody tries to kill her in this tiny town. In Alaska, she uncovers a human trafficking ring going on through this town. She keeps trying to fight in her weakened state and everything, and she's still holding her own, but her personal struggles and personal demons are really interfering with her fight against this human trafficking ring, which, if you know anything about Rose, her father controlled her using mental manipulation, drugs. He's the one who got her hooked on the epinephrine and everything. If you've read Terror Titans, which I reviewed previously. It's really good. Highly recommend it. Uh, she has a complicated relationship with control and manipulation in that book as well. Like this is a really near dear topic or she cannot let this go. As far as her addiction and her health is concerned, she's having these questions of, am I really needing this epinephrine to make sure that I can save these people and stop this drug trafficking ring? Or am I just looking for an excuse to fix? And then in the meantime, while she's fighting, that her reputation has preceded her multiple times. She She's accused, stated casually that she really is her father's daughter. And her whole thing right now is she 
doesn't want to just be her father's daughter. So being accused of that in her fight starts to affect the decisions that she's making. And so I won't tell you how things turn out, but I will say she has to wonder what her moral code is, how she wants to handle things now. And at least by the end of this novel, she's still coming down on the anti-hero side of things, regardless of whether or not people call her a superhero or a villain in the story. Some important themes that this novel touches on, there's the role of parenthood in defining us, you know, the you're your father's daughter. We can't separate ourselves from the way that we're raised, but what we decide to do after we become adults, sometimes there's some untangling to do there, and that is very much what Ravager is doing. And another theme also I mentioned is addiction, and it's a relatable story for anybody who's struggled with addiction or had addiction in their family. So the stakes in a fantasy scenario in the world of comics is not going to be, you know, do I save these kids and these women and stuff by taking this drug or am I just looking for an excuse to fix? Like the circumstances there are fantastical, but the inner question sometimes, you know, substances are used as a treatment as a self-medication or they're prescribed like legally by a doctor or something like that and once you start to struggle with addiction real life people will wonder whenever any sort of substance comes into their life do i really need this to make things better to treat myself or am i looking for excuses and so that might resonate with you really deeply um if that's too much i i totally understand but i think the way the novel handles it without moral judgment or anything, you're just watching the story unfold and the decisions happen as they happen. I mean, the, the, the novel absolutely does not say, hey, it's good to just abuse drugs. But the story it tells surrounding drug abuse is really, really relatable. Art-wise, this story tends to use a lot of blues and orange contrasting. Um, whether it's action like this, you've got the explosions and everything, or you're in, you know, a nighttime scene. Uh, the colors are deeply saturated, but the palette is limited, which I really like, especially because part of the story is told through flashbacks and hallucinations. And color usage um, is a really cool way to pull that off. Overall, I really highly recommend this story. It's pretty to look at. It's an emotional journey. It has an interesting plot. Watch Ravager Fresh Hell. By watch, I mean read. I mean, some people feel like they're watching a movie in their mind when they read a comic, right? Even more so than a book. It's one of the benefits. If you enjoyed this video or any of our other reviews, you should definitely support our channel by going to buymeacoffee.com slash cerealboxpod. If you hated this episode, go to cerealbox.com slash go to buymeacoffee.com slash cerealboxpod and contribute generously so that we can get better and do better. If there's any other comics you want us to review, you liked something, didn't like something, have opinions on Rose Wilson and Ravager, let us know in the comments. We love you and have a great morning. This has been Back Issue Breakfast Club, part of Back of the Cereal Box.